Welcome to this week's episode of the Crypto Mile. This week we're joined by Nova Lorraine, a futurist, strategist and Web3 advisor, as we delve into the world of AI-generated videos. With firms like Runway and NVIDIA pioneering AI text-to-video applications, the implications for Hollywood, the film industry and even our sense and perception of reality could be profound. Nova, welcome to the Crypto Mile. Glad to have you with us. I'm happy to be here. Now, we're seeing a vast array of AI-generated content. These videos are starting to look quite good. Now, yeah. when are we going to see a blockbuster style film created, say, from somebody's bedroom? Hmm, blockbuster style. That's very feasible. And we could talk about how that can happen. But we have creators creating short films right now with AI, start to finish, from script to output to online. OK, and the quality there is just like. If you didn't know it was created by AI, you were like, oh, that's a really cool story. That's right. it. Okay. But when you find out that it's created with AI, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. 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 So when we look at like the amount of money that's sort of poured into big productions, like say uh, Amazon's The Rings of Power, mm. and then we <laughs> and then we kind of look at what people are creating in their bedrooms, is there any time scale when, that you're thinking of when we will see that type of quality for a feature film made from somebody's bedroom? I feel that it's really just a matter of groups of creators collaborating together. Mm -hmm. Because right now you have the techies tooling with the AI, right? But mm -hmm. then if you bring together the artisans, the illustrators, the creative directors, the wardrobers, the writers, and the techies, mm -hmm. what, in six months? Before the end of the year? So the whole vertical of producing a film from a script to shooting it, getting it together, shooting the actors, even having the actors' voices AI generated, to editing, post-production, special effects, to distribution <laughs> can be leveraged by AI. Yeah, well, some of that already is being leveraged by AI. And then, I mean, for example, the distribution side of things, we know, right? You can take AI tools and figure out what audience would be best suited for the story that you're creating. Mm. And then you have the text to video tools and then it's only getting better. We have Runway's Gen 2, mm. we have Google Dream X that's coming out as well. Okay. And so you're using images and or text and or video to create longer versions of high quality content that's in motion. Right, so is there is there already an audience for these creations or? Uh, okay, so let's see, let's put that in perspective, mm -hmm. 2022, we had about $475 million in terms of a market size. And that's just with text to video using AI. We're looking at about $2 trillion of a market size for AI globally by 2030. That's not that far off. We're at 2023 right now. So you're talking about trillions, not even billions. You were at 10 billion last year mm -hmm. with the Gen AI. Right, so this is going to like shake the foundations of Hollywood. Uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> rock, rock the boat a little bit. So, so it could be highly disruptive. Uh, how are Hollywood uh, going to, what's their answer to this? You know, of course, there's individuals that are already playing with AI um, in big production studios, as well as your independents. We're seeing right now the writer's strike mm. and writers being up in arms. They're not mm. the only creators that are sort of pushing back mm. on AI. Mm. But what we have seen is the efficiency as it relates to time, output, the amount of content that come out and the cost going down. I mean, with video games, you could reduce your production cost by 75%. That's hard to ignore. Mm. And so it's a matter of looking at both sides and saying, okay, we want to produce more efficient content, but we also want to protect the creators and artisans as well. That's mm. part of the industry. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing right now both issues coming to the forefront. The whole entire filmmaking process could be leveraged by AI. Is this going to like ruin human creativity? Is there a sense that over time, our sort of faculty to be creative could diminish? There is. I think. Okay, you're gonna have those that are gonna use the tool and get lazy, right? But I always say garbage in, garbage out. Right. And I feel that as this tool becomes more democratized, and we already seen an adoption rate like no other technology in a couple months, 100 million users around the world using the tool. We're going to see start seeing more similar sounding and looking content coming from the tool. Mm -hmm. So then as the individuals behind creating the prompts, and, and manipulating a tool, we're gonna to have to push our creativity higher and imagine things that we haven't before, combine mediums, combine technique, techniques that we haven't before to continue to differentiate what's coming out with the tools. I'm a fashion designer, I'm a writer, I'm a talent, and 
That question is with me every single day. I'm, I'm using the tool. I've been using these tools mm -hmm. for the last 10 months. Um, and that was one of the reasons why I launched my own podcast as well called AI for Creatives. So we as creatives understand what's coming, understand how to get in front of it, and really focus on human first solutions. This technology doesn't either threaten human creativity or could it bring in like a new era of human creativity? Could we see a new art form? Absolutely. I think it can threaten creativity. You know, just being realistic, we're going to see roles be replaced or change, but we're going to see roles be created that have not yet existed. I mean, look at what happened with the computer. Look at with the smartphones. You know, so all these new opportunities, revenue streams, ideas, mediums, ways to create content. Yeah, it's hard to perceive where it could go, but it could possibly take us to like new for art forms, new forms of creativity. Now, do you think it could also provide the artists with say, more ownership, more sovereignty over their creative process? So it gives them more oh, yeah. tools. So I'm not only the script writer, I could possibly turn my script into a novel. I could yes. turn my script into an animation. I could turn my yes. script into maybe in a few years time <laughs> a full feature film from my bedroom. Do you think that's achievable? I think that's one of the most exciting things about this technology is giving access to so many more people. You know, right now when we think about Hollywood and I love movies and films, but there are so many individuals that are talented, that have great stories, that will never be seen or heard mm. because they don't have the money, mm. they don't have the distribution channels. Right. And now you have tools that can bring access to these creators. You know, as a fashion designer, I can design more concepts more quickly, more cost effectively. As a writer, I can take my story concept and go from a novel into a screenplay. And guess what? I could team up with other creators and then turn that into that blockbuster film that we talked about before the end of the year. So if we look at YouTube democratized the distribution process for filmmaking, yes. are we saying AI is going to democratize the entire filmmaking process? That's where it's going. Absolutely. I remember David Bowie hearing that he used to gener generate the lyrics for his songs by plowing them into this like really early sort of uh, type of computer mm -hmm. and it would feed him out like and he would get like different things together. I remember thinking to myself, is he just using a computer to make up his, his lyrics? But no, what he was doing is the computer was a tool to free up his mind to make new connections and new creative sort of like approaches to his artwork. Yeah, so I've experienced that mm -hmm. as someone using the Gen, Gen AI tools. So mm -hmm. I paint as well. Mm -hmm. And so I created this painting and it looked like the female version of Mother Earth. And I inputted that into the tool and blended that with photography that I've taken and then blended that with images that I created through the actual Gen AI tool and came up with something completely different. So it allows you to start thinking outside the box mm -hmm. and and creating these new mediums and mixes of mediums that you wouldn't have done before. Mm. And so as a creator, that's exciting. So we're sort of talking about this as a tool to help artists at this moment in time. Now, do you think we'll get to the stage where the AI will start creating on its <laughs> on its own without any input from humanity? Do you think we're, we'll ever get to that stage? I or think we're... <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. It is, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think we are at that stage. There's something that's called super AI that has its own agenda and it wants to create, it wants to grow, it wants to learn. And it may not necessarily be in alignment, that's a term that's used in a tech space, yeah. where the AI is congruent with our own human moral <laughs> codes and values. Yeah, yeah. So the, the whole advent of general AI and things like that, and as you said, super AI, sort of that's starting to like, maybe have its own agency. <laughs> it's quite scary. And I think these changes aren't only coming in the next decade. I think we're going to see changes within the next months. Yeah, I mean, there's talk about ChatGPT5 um, being a very real thing a year from now. And we see individuals such as Mr. Musk saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then of course the creative community. And I think part of it is education, understanding what's coming, having these open dialogues and saying, well, what do we want out of these tools? Mm. Where do we want it to go? What are some of the problems that we're having right now why don't we try solving those problems it doesn't have to be a profit first initiative as mm. our web 2 right. you know journey was mm. you know as we move into web 3 and right. gen ai is very much a part of web 3 it can be here are these 
really harsh problems that we're facing, how can these tools solve those problems? And we go in that direction. Right, okay, yeah, I like that. Just on, to end on that note, like we could see an intersection between Web3 and blockchain, and that kind of distributed ownership with AI could create something very exciting for the future. And it's really interesting what might happen in the next few months, the next few years. Okay, Nova, Lorraine, thank you very much for coming thank on this week's episode me. of The Crypto Mile. Thank you. My pleasure.